just give you five quick items to make sure that you get the maximum result. Real simple, I'm going to do it real quick because we've got to finish. The difference in people, the difference in performance, the difference in the final result, the outcome, is it usually dependent upon skill? Is that what makes one person better than another, yes or no? How many have seen someone with unbelievable innate skill get wiped out by an athlete, a person, a business individual who clearly had less skill? How many have seen this happen? Say, I. It's our ability to maximize. We said on day one, leaders are what transform organizations. You want to grow this company, you want to transform this company, leaders do it. A leader doesn't mean everybody else follows you, it just means that you have a higher what? A higher standard than anybody else does. What will make you the leader is when you have a higher expectation, not of other people, anybody can do that, of whom? Of yourself. So if you want to know what does it take to take things to the highest level, what's it going to take to change my business permanently, not temporary, you can go home and you can install some of these strategies, skills, tactics, tools, insights, and see a significant change. But if that change is going to be a lasting company of value that keeps growing, then the things you've learned here have to become the standard for your organization, not something you did for a period of time. Whenever you look at somebody and say, why are they more successful than anybody else? It's always because of step one, they've raised their standard. If you go back home and you want to change your life in any way, personally, professionally, or your company, as boring as it sounds, as stupid as it ain't it sounds, you might say, I spent all this time, this energy, this money, and you're going to tell me to raise my standards? Yes. Because even though that's not sexy, it is the only thing that creates lasting change. You can go on a diet and you can lose weight, but what will that person eventually do? They'll go where? Back, unless they raise their standard. Now that sounds so trite and stupid and positive thinky or old school, but the truth is it's the truth. So maybe I can language it in a way that's more compelling to you or more simple. What does it mean when we say raise our standards? It means you turn your shoulds in the must. The difference in people is that they turn their shoulds into must. The things that you used to say I should do, you do your shoulds when it's convenient, when it's comfortable, when it goes your way. But when something is a must, not to other people, but a must to you, do you find the way to get it done, yes or no? Yes. So the difference in people is what's their must, or another word for that is what's their standard. Every person in this room right now our bodies are a reflection of our physical standards. They are not a reflection of our desires. Many, most people have a desire for more energy or a better body or a stronger body or a more fit body. We don't get our goals, we get our musts. The ones that are the must become how you are. And guess what? It shows up in your rituals. When it's a must, you have different rituals, different things you do consistently when you must have your body a certain way than you should or you'd like to or you ought to. How many follow what I'm talking about here? Say, I. So whether we want it or not, the only way to change your body long term is change what the must is for you. Now, I'm not telling you what it should be. Who the hell am I? I'm just saying maybe it's time for you to take a look. Because many times you set the standard a long time ago, or you lost the standard completely because most of us base our standards by our environment. Who you spend time with is who you tend to become. So if everybody around you is gaining a little weight or everybody around you is, you know, constantly tired, after a while, even if you had high energy, you don't want to make fun of them or tease them or make them feel bad. So gradually, subconsciously, you lower your own standard just a little bit. And that little bit is that old metaphor, overused but true. You take a frog and put him in boiling water, what's he going to do? Jump right out. But if you put him in and turn the water up real slowly over time, it'll boil to death. That's most people's lives, isn't it? And it's usually because you haven't remembered the power of who you spend time with. Who you spend time with is who you become. So one of the things that's great about this five days is you found people from all over the world who are all absolutely committed to go day and night, night and day, literally, sometimes with food, sometimes without, <laughs> but whose standard was, I am here to maximize who I am, what I'm about, what I'm going to take home, what I'm going to create. That raises your game. Remember, play against somebody you're better than, your skill's going to go down. Play against somebody better than you, just to stay on the court, the game has to go up. 
Want to change your life? Raise your standard. Want to raise your standard the most? Get around where it's better. Surround yourself with people playing the game much higher than you are. So just to be around them, your game has to rise. That's part of what we try to do. When we come into a company, we create that by raising the standard amongst them. Or you've got to do it by yourself, but you've got to do it. How many agree with me on this? Say I. And it starts with whom? It starts with us. So raise the standard. I remember when I met Michael Jordan for the first time, and it was while he was still with the Bulls. And I asked him. I got a chance to do some coaching a bunch of people, and I think I introduced him because of this. And I said, Michael, I said, how is it you do this? I mean, you're the best that's ever lived at this stage. Got to ask the same question of Wayne Gretzky. And interesting, Wayne Gretzky, I'd read someplace, and he gave me the same answer. I asked him the same thing. You're not the fastest. You're not the strongest. You're not, you know, you don't, how is it you're the great one when you're not the fastest, the strongest, the quickest? And he said, well, Tony, I appreciate the compliment, but he said, I think one of my advantages is most people skate to where the puck is, and I skate to where the puck is going. The power of what? Anticipation. Anticipation. He knows the pattern. With Jordan, his standard was, I asked him, he said, you know, Tony, everybody, you know, I said, what, what makes you the best? Is it natural ability? Is it talent? Is it skill? Is it God-given? Is it strategy? What is it? He said, Tony, I think I can say this to you without it sounding like hyperbole. He said, I have got unbelievable natural skills. But he said, study my history and you'll know why I am who I am. I did not make the high school varsity team when I was a sophomore in school. High school, I got cut. He said, I had a lot of natural talent, but the greatest gift of my life was a coach who said, you're not on the team. And I looked at him and I laughed at him. I said, you've got to put me on the team. I'm the most talented guy out there. He said, no, you're not. He said, you have a lot of natural talent, but you have no heart, no absolute commitment, no real drive. You're not on my team. And it just crushed him. And finally he negotiated and he said, look, you want to be on my team next year? Simple. Meet me every morning before school for a one-on-one -on -one practice and I'll take this raw talent and I'll teach you discipline. I'll show you how to raise your standard. And if you show up the whole year, I'll guarantee you a spot next year. And if you don't, probably the same outcome is going to happen when you try out next year. He couldn't believe it. And guess what? Most people don't know. Michael Jordan got up every morning and drilled and drilled and drilled and didn't get to be on the team. And next year he was on the team and he was not only good, he was great. Guess when his career exploded? When he lost again championship to Detroit. And he was on the bus, he said, he was crying in the back of the bus, physically crying, pissed off at all the other players that they hadn't done their job. And something inside of him snapped and realized, crying, whining, blaming everybody else is not the problem. I need to raise my... Because he realized that's what did it for him originally. And you know what he did that year? He lifted weights. Like never in his entire life, he decided he was going to dominate every person, every person, every floor, every place, every spot in the country. He's going to be stronger than anybody. He practiced like he'd never practiced in his life. And oh, by the way, he won how many NBA championships? How many in a row? Three. Retired, came back, and won how many in a row? Three. Never anybody in history would even dream of such a thing, especially after retirement. That's the power of raising your standard. But guess who he competes with? Michael told me one time, he goes, Tony, if I competed with other people, I wouldn't be who I am. He said, my competition is with the best I can be. They're trying to compete with me. That's why I beat them. Because they're competing with where I am. But I'm competing with where I can be. Think about that mindset. Think how your life would be different if you raised the standard of what you expected from yourself. Not your people, yourself, to that level. How things could shift. It's all about changing your shoulds to musts. It's all about going back and saying, this is how it's going to be. It's like when Gary Vee was here and he was the guy who was saying, man, I'm working so hard, man. I work from 9 to 6. He goes, yeah, what are you doing from 8 to 2? 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. That's when you master your craft. I always say to people, it's what you practice in private that you'll be rewarded for in public. People say, oh, my God, you know, you have this great ability, this great skill. They didn't see all the hours. This class, this course, I know tons of the stuff like the back of my hand. But if you talk to my team who's exhausted... They'll tell you we're up to 4 a.m. almost every night. To be able to figure out how to provide for you a life cycle and get it to be real so you can think about Nike and have give you accurate information about when did they really get to young adult, when they fall down. We had to make phone calls, read financials, do all kinds of stuff. We did all that stuff. We were doing all these things and we've accomplished so much and I figured out how to make it even better. That level of commitment is what makes you great at what you do and gives you that little edge that makes you stand out from everybody else. 
And that standing out is what makes somebody absolutely own an industry or brand themselves like nobody else in the world. That process is what this is about. Raise your standard. When you've got to go home, you've got to say, where are we going to raise the standard? What am I going to take that's been my should and make it absolute must? Where are we going to do that as a team and how are we going to pull it off? Now, who here has ever, by the way, your income right now is a result of your standards as well. It's not the industry and it's not the economy. Who here is making more money today than you made 10 years ago? Let me see your hands. How many feel like it's not enough today? Let me see your hands. And how could that be? Real estate's so cheap now. Computers are cheaper than they were then. You get so much more for your money. Because once you achieve a level, who knows what happens? You immediately, you close the gap, you create a new gap. That's because that's what makes us grow. Who's willing to go back to where you were 10 years ago? Not many. Some of you, you would be because it's gotten worse in the last 10 years for you. But the majority, there's no way. See, once you're fortunate enough, if you don't like cleaning house, once you're fortunate enough to have somebody clean your toilets, you will not be doing that again. Unless you like that. You'll find somebody who loves cleaning toilets and you'll pay them handsomely. Because now to go back and do that, once you've had the privilege of not having to do that, it's a different game. It's a gross metaphor, but who gets what I'm talking about here? Say I. Once you have a must, you find a way to get to it. Every one of you in this room is earning what you must earn, not a dime more. Don't get me wrong, you might have big goals, big desires, but it's not a must for you. Because even when the economy crunches, if it's a must, you will find the way. How many agree with me on this? Say I. See, when it was a must for me to get at one level, I did. I remember it was a must for me to finally make a million dollars a year. I had my son, Jarek, going to be born. I swore I would never have a child unless I was financially set. And I wasn't financially set. And he was on his way. I went from $38,000 a year to making a million dollars a year in the next 12 months. And that was all BS. In my head, I thought all my growing up, all the pain was because my parents fought because there was no money. They would have fought anyway. Because I believed that, though, I raised the standard and made it happen. And then I made a million dollars a year for seven straight years. Even though I built five more companies, even though I was helping more people, I made the same amount of money. Guess why? That was my must. At some level above that, seemed greedy. Now, it wasn't like I had this incredible lifestyle. I owned a magical home. I had this place called the Del Mar Castle overlooking the ocean in Del Mar, California. But I was on the road, staying at the Ramada Inn in Milwaukee <laughs> with shag carpeting and smelly, you know, dead animals on the wall on my birthday. And my maid, she's back at home in the castle going, oh, Mr. Robbins, happy birthday. Oh, I can't help thanking you. It's so wonderful. Oh, Mr. Robbins, it's so beautiful here. I was sitting out in the jacuzzi overlooking the ocean. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I've lost 22 pounds. I can't tell you. It's been so amazing. I get on your Stairmaster and I watch Oprah. I love your gym, Mr. Robbins. And I'm thinking, she's got a multi-million dollar lifestyle. How many can relate to this in some way, right? So I went from 38000 to a million, so I changed my income. It became an absolute what? It was nothing about money. It was about growing. Because I knew to make more, I'd have to help more people. I'd have to expand. And I came up with this goal. I wanted to feed all the people in San Diego that were homeless. First, my goal was a third of the homeless people. And then my goal was everybody. I said, if I can go from 38000 to a million, I should be able to go from a million to three million in three years. And I did it in 12 months. I found the why, I found the reasons, I got a different RPM. But it became a must for me, not a should. You're meeting your must, my friends. Maybe it's time to change your must. Some people's must is to survive. Some people's must is to be okay. Some people's must is to have freedom. Some people's must is to have more than they could possibly spend. Some people's must is to take care of everybody around them. Whatever your must is, you're gonna get it. When you leave here, get clear on your must. Or raise your what? Step two, real fast, I'm gonna do it real fast. Who here has ever raised the standard and you get out there and you go, I'm going to go do this. And I'm committed. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I'm going to take my company to the next level. And you're all excited. And then all of a sudden this voice in your head goes, who are you kidding? <laughs> Who's ever had one of these? Raise your hand. Say, I. So once you raise your standard, you got to get certainty behind it. You can sustain it. And that means you got to change your limiting beliefs. you got to change your limiting beliefs. And who has limiting beliefs, by the way? Who? Everyone does. So you've got to become aware of it, and you've got to destroy it. Now, how to do that, honestly, if you've been to the UBW, you know how. If you haven't, come join me in San Jose or someplace else.